I always get to turn that off. Ladies and gents, I want to take the time just briefly to discuss a couple of things. You guys don't mind? I was doing some research on that case. And see, I'm going at the angle, and I understand the reason why the person sent it to me. But I'm going at the angle that, hold on a minute. I'm trying to access the court. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, they are trying to say that there are two different things. There's a body politic and a corporate, that there is a distinction between the two. Then it says, under Colorado law, municipalities, cities, and counties, not their various sub-departments, exist as body corporates and body uh, and politics. So body corporate and body politics empowered to sue and be sued. You don't need their permission. They're corporations, ladies and gentlemen. All corporations under the Secretary of State must submit to being sued or suing people. They must have that capability. See, it's called equal protection of law. If they're going to sue you, you must have the power to sue them. The same thing with the United States. If the United States brings a lawsuit against you, you don't need their permission to sue them. Let me, let me say that again. If the United States... You remember, it's called... Aid. Trump claim that presidents can declassify docs by thinking this about is it absurd. the RSS. And, oh, by the way, we'll talk about that Trump thing in a minute. Okay, because this thing about the news, they're reporting that says, I can just think it. Trump said that he could just formulate the thought that the items are declassified. Here's the thing, and I hope his attorneys are listening. Mr. Trump, by his actions of taking those to his home, documented his intent of having those items declassified. It's called conduct and intent. It is just that simple. I know, I know, I know they're going to say they were already on that line. It's okay. He was the president. He didn't need to get somebody's permission. Oh, God. That's like the, 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 the news media, they're, they're implying that he had to put it in writing. Why? Where is that in writing? Where is it in writing that he has to put in writing that he's declassifying something? He's the top agent, literally, he's the top agent in the nation. He's the top police officer of the nation. Did you guys not know that, that the President of the United States is the chief police officer of the nation? He is over the Attorney General. So, ladies and gentlemen, he's the top security officer in the nation. That's why he gets daily briefings. That's why they have to come to him to get permission. Now, hold on. We all know that the president is not the president of the United States, okay? But, you know, I'm just saying, you know, uh, if we're going by the way the structure is. I know I know, some people are going to think that what I just said was, oh, that's just blah, blah, blah. That's obvious. But I promise you, once this gets back to his attorneys, and I guarantee you it will get back to his attorneys, you will hear them use this. Go ahead. Mark my word. Look, if you guys don't think that these people listen to my videos, then you guys, I don't know what to tell you. That your, your sense is not common whatsoever. You have no idea. Ladies and gentlemen, in the courtroom, in... No, it wasn't even in the courtroom. I did the video. I'm sorry, let me, let me correct that. I did this on video. When I asked the so-called psychologist after, because they're doing a psyche vow, sent me from Puerto Rico to Miami. And when I'm in Miami in their little detention center across the street from their courthouse and watching the ships roll in, because it was the dark of the bay, the doctor calls me in. And we talk for an hour, and I'm just talking about everything. I'm just talking like I do on these videos. And then after an hour, I go, excuse me, but I have one question. And he goes, okay. I said, you're here to evaluate me as to whether or not I understand the law. And I'm capable of speaking for myself in court. Well, yes. Uh, what, what, 
did you get your law degree? Well, I, I don't have one. Well, well, how can you, not being a student of law, determine whether or not I'm capable of understanding the law? Well, we'll meet again on uh, Thursday and again on Friday and perhaps again on Saturday, and then I will send my report to the court. Man, I'm still waiting for Thursday to get here. That wasn't, ladies and gentlemen, I'm still waiting for Thursday to get here. That was 2013. I am still waiting for Thursday to get here. Do you know that there were several other people who have used that, several courts who have used that, uh, several attorneys, by the way, and the courts have said it doesn't matter? Yes, it does matter. If you're going to make a determination as to whether I know law, the person who's making that determination had better himself know law. Because if the person making the determination is not competent to understand the law, which is why they let everything go. Ladies and gentlemen, they know where I'm going with my arguments when I bring it. They see the pros and cons, the ups and downs. They are trying to outthink me, but they cannot. I won't allow it. Just that simple. Again, there was a situation. I forgot if the attorneys used it. Oh, <laughs> when I asked the stupid detective <laughs> at the probable cause hearing, excuse me, I have a question for you. And, and then I let him talk, and I didn't interrupt him. I didn't object to anything he said. And I just simply said, have you ever lied before? And he looked at me, and he smiled, and I said, I'm sorry, is there something wrong? He says, well, if I say yes, I've lied, then you say I can't be trusted. And if I say no, I didn't lie, then you'll say everybody lies. I said, I won't do anything of the sort. I'm just asking a question. Have you ever lied before? And he said, yes. Okay, that's it. That's all I have. Uh, you're dismissed. And that was it. And several attorneys <laughs> have used that. Look, he can't be trusted. Everybody lies. So there is no such thing as being on their oath, telling the truth. Everybody will lie to protect themselves. It is human nature. Why? Why? Tell him that. It Michael Jackson said, if y'all ever ask why again, to tell you that it's human nature. It's human nature. It is human nature. This is what humans do. That's why it's such a big struggle in life not to lie. And I'm glad I'm segueing over to that. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses. No, I'm not your typical Jehovah's Witness. Very few Jehovah's Witnesses act like me. But see, I'm a Jehovah's Witness. I'm a witness of Jehovah first. I'm a part of the organization second. Now, what does that mean? That means that I've been doing the playing with words. Oh, you stupid mother. I've been doing that since I was a child. And he has never, my God, has never indicated to me that he doesn't appreciate that. Now, mind you, would I have a conversation with him like that? No. No. But he doesn't think like a human. Okay? He doesn't think like that, ladies and gentlemen. He doesn't think like you and I. He's not human. I'm only human. Okay? He's not human. He doesn't think like us. He doesn't hold a grudge. We hold grudges. Look. I saw that they were doing a movie about Jeffrey Dahmer. Ladies and gentlemen, I really hated what Jeffrey Dahmer did. Especially that 14-year-old kid that the police looks at this kid, and it's okay, they thought he was an adult. Uh, yeah, whatever. They look at this kid, but the only reason why that happened is because he was a foreigner. He was of Asian descent. I believe he was Vietnamese. And the police let him go back into the house, and the kid is now dead because the police simply refuse to do their job. They know this kid is bleeding from his rectum and they send him back into the house instead of having him sent to the hospital to have him checked out. It's okay. Stupid is what stupid does. I just saw a video yesterday where a police officer is parked on a railroad track with a passenger in the car. What the? F and a train comes and hits the car? The passenger survived with a lot of broken bones. But what sense does that make? Everybody knows you don't park on a railroad track. And he knows that that was a active track.
there's there's no way in the world you're gonna park on a railroad track. Oh, I made a mistake. I parked on a railroad track. Let me pull the car up just a little bit. Please, ladies and gentlemen. You could hear the train coming. That's the sound of the men. They're working on the chain. Anyway, and this officer leaves the person in the car. Does not attempt to get the person out of the car. That shows you their level of intelligence. So, as I said, the God that I serve doesn't think like humans. He's never made a mistake. That's right. And you can't account him for making a mistake. And I know in this world right now, believing in a God, man, we'd rather believe in energy and and uh, forces of nature. We'd rather believe in astrology. Oh, the, the, the universe. Astrology. We have to create our gods now because we refuse to believe in the true God. Oh, that's outdated. That's old. That's from blah, 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 blah. Excuse me. Just because my grandmother is 100 years old, just because my grandmother, now pay attention, listen to the analogy. Just because my grandmother is 100 years old doesn't mean that she doesn't exist. Doesn't mean that her wisdom is gone. That type of ignorant thinking, well, the Bible is outdated. Really? So my grandmother is now outdated. Do you understand how stupid that is? I'm to discount something because... It's a couple of years old, a couple of centuries old. Wait, 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 wait. A couple of millennia old, a couple of billion years old, a couple of trillion years old. I'm to discount him and all of his wisdom, which to this day, nobody's been able to discount. Think about it. When he prophesies something, it comes true. Can you show me somebody who's disproved his prophecies, who's proved that it ain't true? Just making sure the mic is connected. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason I didn't mean to do that, yeah, we're going to apply all jurisdictions. It, it sh I should have had all jurisdictions applied in the first place. Matter of fact, this is a Supreme Court case. This is a 1991 case. This is a Stump case. Uh, Stump, I believe, is also involves arbitration because I've gone over Stump, and it talks about an arbitrator and everything, but Stump is a jurisdictional case. Now that's, I'm pretty certain of Stump because I've read Stump before, but I'm not really, I am not really concerned about that right now. Do, do you understand? That's not the point. And it is a jurisdictional case, but I'm not concerned about what Stump was about because it may have been more than one Stump. Uh, like, you know, Stump in the Yard. So it may have been more than one Stump. But what I can say, it wasn't a tree. OK, what I what I can tell you is this, ladies and gentlemen, you have the right to free access to the court. The court cannot prohibit you from accessing the court freely. This is a, a free right, your right to petition government. That's what the case that I was playing in my background using and no. TFO beats in, in sit cycles to give team world first lava cup win. Oh, I don't care. This is why this is popping up. I don't, I don't mind that, the highlights a Russian and her reading it. I could set it to where it doesn't happen like that, but I'm going to keep it like that because I got it like that. The right of access to the court is basic in our system of government as well and is well recognized as one of the fundamental rights protected by the Constitution. Ladies and gentlemen, Supreme Court, in this case, that's the case. Uh, this is one of the cases I've already looked up. You have the right to free access to the court. Why? Because your taxes, your taxes pay their annual budget. Okay? That's why, as I showed you, the court recognized my right to complain. Look, once I learned about the right to redress, y'all don't even understand. Y'all have no idea. I said, really? Complaining is legal? Oh, God! And I was complaining all the time. Petition for redress. But now that I know that I have the right to free access. Now, let me make sure you guys understand that that's what the case says. Uh, I got to go back. Sorry. One, two. Give it a second. 
let's see, one more. I gotta go back. This right here. Now watch this. We're gonna do Control F, and you see how it has free. There are gonna be a couple of times it's gonna say free that ain't ain't the times I needed to say free. I just needed to get to where it's going because it ain't going there. Okay, free from difficulties. Has the right to free access to its seaports through which all operations of foreign trade and commerce are conducted. Hey, even if you're engaged in commerce, you as a citizen of the United States, and I, when I say citizen, I'm not talking 14th Amendment. See, people became citizen when they gave government the right to operate. So they're a citizen of the government, but not a citizen of Congress, not a citizen of the executive branch in their administrative capacity, in their corporate capacity. That's what you need to understand. You never gave up those rights. That's why the Act of 1866 is there. That was your protection. That's, hey, go back and take a look. That's why a lot of people were against it, including the president. A lot of people were against the Civil Rights Act of 1866. That right, that act was there to protect you. Y'all need to learn the Civil Rights Act of 1866. That's your best friend. When you hear about these 1983 cases and all that, that's what they're talking about. Don't go on the civil side of the Civil Rights Act. Go on the criminal side of the Civil Rights Act. Violate my rights. You're violating the law. Now, may, pay attention. Has the right to free access to. Hold on now. We got to continue that sentence. The courts of justice of the several states. And this right is independent in its nature of the will of any state over whose soil the individual person may pass in the exercise of it. That's what the courts have said. So how do I take this sentence? Let me show you how we take this sentence. And we write the court. You don't need to do anything but follow me. Not the administrative subpoena. Not I said not the, oh, I clicked on the administrative subpoena anyway. Pay attention to this. Watch this. This is what we're going to do. Okay, we got our Crandall. Crandall. Okay, he has the right to free access, and we're going to go to the courts of justice, ta, 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 of the several states, and this right in its nature is independent of the will of any state over whose soil he may pass in the exercise of it, meaning this is a free right, not a taxable right. Pay attention. This is your... This is how you do it. This this is how we do it. Okay? And I, I missed the word, so I'm going to have to add that word. So y'all going to have to bear with me for a second. Okay? Y'all just going to have to bear with me. Going to do that and bold that. Watch this. I temporarily and partially... And remember, these are the courts of justice, that pagan god, Artemis. If y'all don't know who Artemis is, then y'all need to do your research. She's the pagan god Artemis, the goddess of justice. Y'all heard of her. Okay, Esther, that is the pagan god. When you hear a Lady Diana, Princess Diana, it's the goddess of justice. So the courts of justice. But anyway... He has the right to free access to the courts of justice. Ladies and gentlemen, when you need to do a fee waiver, when they demand you do a fee waiver, say, oh, no, I'm doing a petition. I'm not doing a motion. Pay attention. Go back. Go back and look. The fee waiver is for filing motions and civil complaints. Pay attention. Civil complaints. You have the right to complain, so you do a redress petition for grievance. So petition for redress of grievance, people. Petition, don't motion. You don't have a right to motion. You don't have a right to file. You have a right to record. Go ahead and look at what the county recorder does. The county recorder doesn't file anything. The county recorder records documents. But they're filing your certificates of satisfaction. They're filing your reconveyances. They're not recording them because they changed the statute. When people like me did videos, 
telling you guys After to declaring go and look that up, he's not a terrorist, Trump uses North Carolina rally to vilify New York Attorney General Letitia James. Out of here. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain. We did the video telling everybody about the reconveyance. We even got an account with Data Tree. Just they couldn't give us what we're looking for, so we let the account expire. But we got an account with Data Tree, very expensive account, so that we could prove, pay attention, satisfaction of mortgages for you guys. Then they changed the system after I put the video up, telling everybody about going and getting their satisfaction of mortgage. So last thing we're going to talk about in this video, because I just wanted to show you your right of access to the court. And then what we do. Watch this. Okay, we're going to take this whole sentence right here. And look, ladies and gentlemen, get out of here, subpoena. I got to finish the subpoena today because I got an administrative case that I'm getting ready to subpoena information from the idiots. Uh, look at what I put in. Okay, now the first case is probably going to be the same case that we just had. That's what case text tries to do. And I should have got rid of the dot, dot, dot. But anyway, plaintiff argues that as a citizen of the United States that they have the right to free access to the courts of justice of the several states and that such a right is in its nature independent of the will of any state. Did you see that somebody did the exact same thing that I did? Exact same thing. Okay? Now, here they make it look like the plaintiff is wrong, that he's coming up with this out of his own head. Pay attention. Have the right to prosecute and defend an action in the courts of the Commonwealth according to the established rules and procedures. The Supreme Court has answered this question. We don't care about the Supreme Court answering this question. This is a right. Supreme Court has no control over a right. In this case right here, the case arose out of the prosecution of a defendant on the charge. Excuse me. Nobody cares about somebody being accused of that. This was a indictment against the person. This was not the person accessing the court. Supreme Court, that was a completely different case talking about somebody being charged in an indictment. That's the Fifth Amendment. That is different. Completely different. But it is the right of a citizen to free access of the court. Supreme Court did not answer that question. I guarantee you they didn't. Now let's see what this second case says. Access to court is a right guaranteed to all persons, federal and state, by the Constitution. So I, get, I thought the Supreme Court answered the question according to that court. Access to the court is indeed a right guaranteed to all persons, federal and state constitutions. There you go. Free access to the court is an essential right recognized by our state constitution. Ta-da! Okay, it's not just one case you're going to find it. I just never decided to look it up, and that's why I told the person who sent it to me, it is essential to a free society. See, you're not supposed to be charged to get access to government. That's why you pay taxes. Your access to the court is not just access to the court. It's free access to the court. That's why their budget is already paid. So let's do that. We we, we here. We, we here at 23 minutes. I'm going to try to keep this under 30 because it's time. Oh, I didn't want to do a new cap tab. C-A-S-E. T. Okay, let's go here. Come on, hurry up, Case Tex. What was my what was my connection interrupted for? Oh, the VPN? That's right. Come on now. Give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. There's no reason. Well, let, let's let's let that go. It did say it was interrupted. Let's let that go and let's let you guys know. Those of you who are trying to figure this mortgage thing out, let me explain to you so that you get it because some of you guys won't understand it. What's happening, and this is what you need to know, what's happening with each of you when you are going to the county recorder and you're asking for this, you're asking for that, you must specify, I need to know where else records are kept for my property. Okay? I need to know where else the records are kept for my property. I need to pause, y'all, because I don't know what's going on with my connection. It looks like it's going to finally go. Okay, it, it went. All right. And then you need to say, and ladies and gentlemen, do a FOIA request. Any and all records associated with this property from this date till present. I need a copy. Access to. Don't, don't ask them to give you a copy. I need direct access to without delay. It's my property. I'm the owner. And the records you're keeping, 
I have a due process right to access. And look at all the reconveyances on the property. Every time they put the stamp paid to the order of, every time they put the stamp paid to the order of on your promissory note, it shows that it's paid. It's an endorsement. It's no longer a promissory note. If it carries a pay to the order of on the promissory note, it's no longer a promissory note. You don't believe me? Go and look at promissory notes under the UCC. They'll say, well, no, this UCC don't apply to mortgage and blah, blah, blah. Yes, it does. Because when I got the loan, the loan was not for a home. They gave me a cash loan, which went into escrow, which paid the private homeowner. I did not get a loan for a home. I got a loan that a personal loan that I used for a home. So of course the UCC applies to consumer loans because it was a consumer transaction. That's how you kill all of that junk from these idiots. Yes, 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 yes. I know some of you don't understand. Wouldn't you love to have this voice in court speaking for you as trustee? Well, that's the program SACOM is getting ready to offer. And because it requires me to come and speak in court, I'll, oh, I'll definitely be doing it video. Won't be doing no travel, medical needs. That's the, so, that's the perfect thing. But we're working out the paperwork now. So those of you who are impatient, you're just going to have to wait. Okay. Now, you know what? I forgot what I was doing. Uh, the A N, -N U L D U D G E T. No, no, no. Oh, get out of here. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I got something. Give me one second. The annual budget for the administration of the court. Is supplied by the Judicial Council. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the legislature shall make an annual appropriation to the Judicial Council for the general operation of the trial court based on the request of the Judicial Council, and thereafter, the Judicial Council shall allocate funding. For the trial court trust fund, remember that trial court trust fund to the trial courts in a manner to best ensure the ability of the courts to carry out their functions. California. So why are y'all paying fees to access the court when they already receive an annual budget? Every state, every state, federal and state. Federal and state. It's not the Judicial Council on the federal level. On the federal level, it's the Administrative Office of the Court. See? As chair, the Chief Justice directs the Council's work, including its allocation of the Judicial Branch Budget, promulgation of rules of court administration and procedures in setting the priority of systems for the system's continual improvement. Ladies and gentlemen, you all need to understand this is what's going on. So why are you all continuing to pay fees? Your right of access to the court is supposed to be free. So subjecting you to fees is double jeopardy. So let me tell you what I'm getting ready to do. You are free to jump on the bandwagon and do it yourself. I'm getting ready to do a petition for remonstrance in the form of a petition for redress of grievance. I'm getting ready to bring up the fact that I was subjected to double jeopardy in each instance of every case that I filed, and that each of these cases, especially those that were dismissed as a result of failure to pay the filing fees, must be reinstated and must be relitigated. Why? Because I was denied due process of law. And no one in this country may be denied due process of law. It is unconstitutionally illegal. I'm sorry, not illegal, unlawful. When you're dealing with the Constitution, you're dealing with unlawful. When you're dealing with statutory law, you're dealing with illegal. So lawful, Constitution, unalienable or inalienable. Let's stop using unalienable. Let's use inalienable. I know you're used to it being pronounced uh, and uh, uh, see, 
unalienable. You're used to it being pronounced alienable, but it's inalienable. And if you break down the word, somebody just told me if you break down the word and use uh, syntax grammar, in is non. So non alienable. So pay attention one thing. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said before, the person who mentioned to me brought up syntax grammar. What I need you all to understand, you can't use syntax grammar with statutes. Statutes are written in legalese, but you can use it with the Declaration of Independence. Pay attention. You can use it with the Declaration of Independence. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope this information was beneficial. 30 minutes of your time that you've given me to explain this. And so... There you are. Have a good day. Have a good life. Have a good time. We will talk again. Goodbye.